Whatever he told you in Zimbabwe, I will not deny. I will just complicate it. Dear colleagues, our TECNA program initiative is currently using an effective holistic approach that was tested and it really works. The Honourable Minister have now just outlined much of what is currently portrayed on the picture that you currently see. And I would like also to emphasize the issue around curriculum and content. I would like to say at this point in time that if, if you don't align your curriculum and make sure that your content is relevant to your curriculum, then don't start a journey. Don't start a journey. Because that is exactly the compass that you will need to make sure that your teachers are groomed and your learners are receiving what they expect to receive in terms of education. But most importantly is that any policy that you devise must base, be based in terms of your educational objectives you want to meet and all those pillars, that holistic components that you currently see there must talk to all your educational objectives that you have already set out yourself. I would also like to say that if you don't have a system to monitor, if you don't have a system to capacitate or to help those that will lead the implementation, your principles, if you don't have that system in terms of to make sure they have a monitoring system, such as an educational management system, then don't start a journey. I will tell you today that it's easy to put the infrastructure into the schools. But if you just put infrastructure there and you don't know curriculum to teach on that infrastructure, the computers to use them, what's the use then? I would like to say that this, pro this, this, this program of us is targeting over 200 schools and other institutions of education every year to put in, for example, uh, infrastructure, ICTs, and also connectivity. And also we do a bit of research that enables new technologies and services. There is an intervention that we're currently looking at, and I think also partnerships complement these interventions. And they are very essential because they bring their own strength and resources to the table. And the Ministry of Education like to consider local partnerships. We look first at home, and then we look towards the national and SADC, and then international. When we launched this program in 2007, we had a symbolic partnership declaration. We had so many partners at that point in time, 47 of them that have signed up in 2007 to say, yes, Ministry of Education, we will support you through, this, through the journey. But importantly here, we would like to reach and capacitate our pre-service teachers. What I'm saying is that those pre-service teachers are young, energetic, and they are bright. And when we train them on ICTs already at, at the university level or at the college level, when they go to the schools and they're placed in the schools, they will create that demand that you need. And you already have a champion in the school that you have deployed. We should not make that mistake, not to train our pre-service teachers on ICTs. School leadership, like for example our innovative teachers and innovative principals programs that we have, is also another key factor to the success. And it should be emphasized because that is how you develop those school leaders or education leaders to understand the needs of the 21st century society. And I would like also to mention to you here that reward and punishment should also be included. If you don't do it, then you will be punished. I would like to share with you today some examples of smart partnerships. I don't want to go into the detail of every one of them as well, but I would just like to show you some of the smart partnerships that the Ministry of Education has taken on, and the, and the journey that we have started with those, with, those, with those partners. I would like to start off, for example, to tell you that we have partners since 2003 
But I would like to emphasize here that actually our journey started only in 2005 with the launch of our ICT policy. But I would like to say here that Microsoft was essential when we started off the journey and also our other strategic advisor, which is the Global E-Schools and Community Initiative under the United Nations ICT Task Force, who was supporting this ministry. But I would like to bring your attention to the word, the business of schools. This was the theme that we have chosen at that time. And apart from that one, that business of schools blueprint went to be the torch in terms of ICTs for Africa in total. The African Pathfinder, and I know some of you will remember it. Maybe you've forgotten about it, but it is still a very relevant document until today. Then I would like to show you something else. I have not taken anything for granted, but I would like to tell you that if you do not measure, one of the biggest examples I can show you today, if you do not measure, because we have done curriculum, we have done content, we have trained more than 40 African countries as Namibia on content development. We have trained more than, uh, more than 350 Namibians on content development. We have gone that route. We have started with the revision of our, our, our curriculum. We've implemented ICTs as a, as a subject. We've implemented ICT literacy as a compulsory subject in all our schools that have ICT facilities. We have gone that route already. We have done the issues around infrastructure. Yes, there's challenges on infrastructure. That I will deal with separately. But I'm trying to also show you that we have taken a very brave step towards the future. And I think that Namibia is making history because we were the first country to adopt and adapt and implement a national educational management information system. And what I'm saying here is that this is the idea that we have. If you have a country where all your schools are all interconnected with a central web-based system. And what I'm saying here is that, yes, we have gone through a groundbreaking agreement, a tedious one It took us almost four years to, com to complete, the user requirements that we have to done. But we are proud today to say, as Namibia, that we have the first national educational management system for all our schools, which is fully licensed to us, and also the IP and the source code are belonging to us. It has been fully customized, and is customized on the fly as we are going as well. And it meets all our curriculum, financial, and timetable requirements. And the best of all, it is free for all our schools in Namibia. There's no charge to them. And I want to show you some of the pictures here in terms of the laws that we've done since uh, in 2012 this year. And I would like to tell you also that we are basically localizing that the training of the system. We have 60 trainers in our country that rolls out the training to our schools on a daily, daily basis. And this is every of those trainers, what they're receiving is a laptop and a projector and bandwidth or broadband, uh, broadband connectivity in the, in the form of 3Gs. And they are going out to the schools to train them on the system. The system just needs an internet connection. We will talk about connectivity very shortly. I would also like to tell you that our system, as I told you, that we have an inclusive curriculum. And yes, the learner is at the center of the learning process. We have a learner-centered uh, curriculum. And in our revised curriculum that is currently implemented in 2014, ICTs are part of their curriculum as well. But we would like to also share with you that we had a partnership with the Millennium Challenge Account or the Millennium Challenge Corporation and also the Bank of Namibia in Namibia, which is our central reserve bank that you have on this one. And there was other partners that has basically joined the table to look at the use and the training specifically in terms of using the one-to-one -one deployment. We have, run, we have already rolled out one-to-one e-learning -one, uh, e classrooms to many schools in, in, in our country. But in terms of to capsulize, to make sure that we have, let's say, a process or a system where we can equip and capacitate our teachers, we do continuous professional development for our in-service teachers. And we are thankful also to Intel, 
who has assisted with this program. What we're also doing is that we need to recognize the champions. We need to know who they are because they are those pillars that we will have within the school that will take this forward for us, that will make sure it continues to be driven. And then we also do pre and post evaluations. Our teachers are tested before they go for training. And after training, we also test them to see how, what they have learned and really if they can implement what they currently have. The idea that I want to basically portray here in terms of time is that no one should be left behind. No one should be left behind because that will make sure that no school will be left behind as well. And for that, I would also like to share a big thank you from the Namibian Ministry of Education and, and our government in total for all of these partners who has been with us for some time now. And I know and I was so, I was so surprised to see many of them here. They, they, some of them, if you have, I let you out, they, because there was no more space on this one slide because of time. I would like to also bring you back to say that yes, in Namibia's vision 2030, in chapter four of that vision, it is stated that ICTs will be the sector, the most important economic sector in Namibia by 2030. And I would tell you that yes, we have done the small steps, we have done the small initiatives to take us forward on those road. And I want to tell you also that in 2007, 2008, according to research ICT Africa, that already 2.9% of ICT already com contributed to our GDP. And in 2008, the same amount, more or less. We are waiting for the figures on 2010 and 2011. But you must understand, in 2007, 2008, government was also the biggest buyer because it used tax money. So that 1.8 million basically was actually coming from government. But we have to flip the coin. It has to come from other sectors within, our, within us. But we also are saying is we have a very great ICT sector. We are blooming in terms of ICTs. And this is just some stats that I'm also showing you in terms of the other countries and other economies. And I apologize for that spelling mistake, spelling mistake there. What I'm saying is that yes, we are making it possible. With the arrival of the WEX cable in Namibia on the 2nd of, uh, the 8th of February this year, we are seeing stars. We are seeing the universe as a, as a, as a, as a never ending story. Because this was the first for Namibia to have its own capacity on any cable system passing the west coast of Africa. The other ones that have passed us, we did not buy into any of that lending. And very importantly is that this cable is not just making this opportunity for us available, but it is also strengthened the relationship between Namibia and Botswana because we are sharing this capacity uh, through Namibia as well. On the 25th of February, uh, April this year, after the WEX cable was uh, landed, that landed in, in, in Namibia, our honor, His Excellency, our President, has made an announcement that in the shortest time possible, all our schools and clinics will have free internet. And we are working around the clock to make this a reality very, very soon. And I would like to also tease you today, and I think the Honorable Minister have just mentioned mobile technologies previously. Mobile phones are prohibited in our schools. But I would like to bring something back to you in terms of using, using social media specifically. I would like to ask, there is currently a debate going on whether social media should be used in schools. Can social media be an ICT tool to make sure that we can improve on collaboration? The idea is that here that we should empower our educators and we should basically make sure that we have access to internet for our schools, but these tools are currently available on the internet. Once the school have access to internet, what are we doing about this? These are the things that put back the fun into school. It put back the fun into ICTs. If you can't use your cell phone at school, school is, I don't think, becoming, is becoming less important. But I'm happy to share with you also today that we have done a review. We have done a review in our schools, and yes, 
Twitter, Facebook, it doesn't matter which room you're going to chat in, is currently blocked. The worst of everything was that the whole government of Namibia is blocking access to Facebook, Twitter, and all of those nice social media um, engines from 8 to 1 and from 2 to 5. Nobody is allowed at work to do a Facebook check or do something on his wall or post something on his wall during working hours. Everybody thinks, everybody thinks that Facebook will just reduce the production or productivity levels of our, of, of, of our staff members. But I would like to say that we should continue the debate and find the answers to this answer. And I'm happy to say that our teachers that we are training and that we use in the integration, the sample I showed you just before, they are currently using the social media, Facebook specifically, in terms of a forum that they set up to make sure they can communicate to each other. We need to find the fine ways. And as I said, my peers have said that we will do anything possible to harness and explore this new thinking, including all the educators who are missing out on this opportunity to use social media, which is an obvious for our teachers and educators. As I said, we need to put back the fun in your education. I'm showing you the current statistics. In terms of our mobile, mobile telephony in, in the country, this uh, being from our regulations authority in Namibia has published this one just uh, in, in March this year. Namibia is currently, in terms of the cheapest product and uh, by a dominant operator, the third in Africa, which is very pleasing. And you also see Mauritius being one, Ethiopia being two, Kenya four, and Egypt. But I wanted to show you that South Africa is currently the most expensive. And if you flip the other coins in terms of just checking the cheapest product in the country, it doesn't have to be by a dominant operator, Namibia is eighth and uh, South Africa the three two. But why am I showing you this? Why am I showing you this? Because I want to tell you, the next time you come to Namibia, you can roam for cheaper. <laughs> Please. I want to invite you all to join us for eLearning Africa 2013, which will be, which will be May 2013. Another mistake on their spelling. Sorry, this is eLearning 2013, eLearning Africa. We will host it in Vinduk, Namibia next year. And you are most welcome to join us at this session. Because there we will make sure that we will pay also some other goodies that we have done for Namibia. I thank you so much. Thank you.